Hello and welcome to another video on the heating system for my quarantine tank for my little fishies. As you can see, despite it being winter, it's fairly warm. They're very hungry little fishies. And I like to keep it, you know, about 20 degrees. However, since my little Hanometer thing over there broke and started telling me the pond was 70 degrees the whole time, um, I haven't really had any good way of telling exactly how warm the water is except for uh, this system here so basically just do that and I can see that it's about 18 degrees so it's a little bit lower temperature than I would have liked so now I know to adjust the thermostat on that heater over there however I want to be able to see quite easily that the temperature of the tank's a little bit low, a little bit high, I want a really nice obvious display that tells me the temperature so I found something um, there are a few different things you can get off eBay and whatnot that will just tell you the temperature but I wanted something that were a little bit more sophisticated and had a nice display on it so I got one of these it's a Filtertake Digistart controller so these have actually not been made for quite some time um, I think they've discontinued them so you can't get them anymore but you can get similar things from like Proline heaters and stuff like that um, however obviously this one being discontinued I got it fairly cheap so I'm thinking this what this is is a heater controller so it can turn the heat it, heater on and off and it also has pong level sensor and some sort of alarm in it or something um, so I'm thinking about doing a little bit of a complicated wiring job. So obviously I could just put power to this and then obviously have a thermostat in it and then the power output would go straight to that heater and it worked fine. The, the heater would turn on uh, when the, you know, when appropriate. However, I wouldn't know, like, like I've got that blue light on there that tells me that the water's flowing appropriately so that the heater is actually operational. I wouldn't know that until the, this turned it on, so I don't want to do it like that. So what I'm wanting to do is have it so this controls that flow regulator. So when the flow regulator of that has power, it allows this to work and so on. So. I know when the whole system's working properly. It's going to be a little bit of complicated wiring job, perhaps unnecessary, but once it's done, it'll be a nice thing to do and have. So I'm thinking about putting it at the end of this uh, here, because then the cables can just run straight out of that. It saves me drilling any holes. Uh, it's a little bit out of the way and should be alright. Yes, so I'm going to have a go at putting that on the wall there. So one thing I will note with this is I would have liked to have tested it beforehand but uh, if I turn it on without the uh, temperature sensor on it it won't let me adjust the temperature very easily because these will only let you adjust the temperature one degree a day um, so if the temperature drops or anything like that it will always go back to whatever it is. So if I turned it on now and the building's temperature is 26 degrees, it'll try and heat the water up to 26 degrees when I start it up. Um, something complicated like that. And I haven't used it enough yet to know that how to bypass that bit of system. So I'm just going to wire it all up and hope for the best. So, let's get going, I guess. So here we are with the heater, as you can see it's actually currently running. So I've got it wired up so that this controller is directly controlling that heater. So if you are, if you just bought one of these heaters from the shop, uh, obviously you wouldn't have them lights on it, I'd put them on in a separate video. Um, but you could just basically wire this heater up, heater controller up, sorry, and then wire it up to turn that on and off. And how I've done that is, Here's where my mains power comes in, so obviously it's not plugged in, it just comes to a fuse switch. And then I've split the power, so uh, live goes to, well there's two live outputs, one live, both live outputs go to this heat controller. Um, one of the live outputs goes to the actual controller system itself, just here, uh, same with an earth and a neutral. Uh, the other live output goes to the actual heater relay just here and then the output of that then goes down back down here to this here which is actually the heaters live so that's how it's controlling the heater sort of directly 
However, I didn't want to wire it up like that, so that's a bit of a simple way of doing it, and it does work quite well. However, when, like, if I press that, so this is set to 20 degrees at the minute, Let's turn it sideways, and it's currently 19 degrees, that's just turned it off. So as you can see, now it's turned it off. It's actually turned the entire system off, which works, but it's not how I wanted it. So what I want to do is bypass this uh, thermostat, because that's also controlling it, and then the float switch in this, not float, the flow switch in this, I want to wire it to this so that when there's not enough flow this won't even try to ask that to turn on um, and then I'll know it's sort of working. It's unnecessary but I can do it so I'm going to. So in a second when this this turns back on we'll uh, I'll show you that, there we go, it's back on. So, if you look, if I turn this thermostat down, the heater turns off again still. So, still controlled by that thermostat for no reason really. So what I'm gonna do is bypass that and connect the flow switch to this. So that this is the main controller and all that is is a heater. And But I am going to, there's a 60 degree thermal cutoff thing in that. I'm going to leave that connected just in case it does overheat. So let's crack on with that. So I've put the heater in a position where I can actually sort of mess about with it. And I've turned the water back on as well. So I've sealed these back up. So it's stuck in this position. So what I've done is, I've, this is the float switch relay which just pops out here. I keep saying float switch, it's a flow switch relay. So that just clicks on there with a little lever that's inside here uh, that pushes up in the water flow so I can't get it back in a minute until I put the until I turn the water off so that's what I need to connect to that ho the other controller so I've put a little hole in here another cable entry and I'm just gonna have a cable that goes to each point of that and then it'll run over to the uh, controller so the controller knows when the heating it hasn't got enough uh, water flow through it. Then I've disconnected the, so this here is the live, um, how well you can see, but this here is the live to the uh, heater. So that's going to get the direct live connection uh, going on it, whereas before it had the connection from this little thermostat here. That's going to be bypassed and it's going to get directly live. The 60 degree um, overheating protection actually um, is on the neutral side so I don't need to worry about that that's no, no need to mess about with anything on there so and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these LEDs that I put on back onto the um, onto this positive side so I don't need both of them anymore I only really need one but I'm going to put both of them on because um, I can because they're there it might as well work and um, they'll only be on when the heat is on and getting power from the other controller uh, just to indicate that we are actually getting power here so what I need to do now is put a cable through here onto this and connect it to uh, this where we've got pins just here for your water flow sensor and it <coughs> as you can see the uh, sensor is shorted out so it's just got a piece of metal over it to make it work. Uh, I'll be removing that and replacing it with the actual switch itself. So let's crack on. Right then, so I've got it all wired up as it should be. So the um, sensor switch is on here. Um, I've just put them connectors on there. This is no longer needed, that's your thermostat. The main line goes straight to the heater. Um, so this heater basically doesn't cut out until it hits the thermal limit which is 60 degrees uh, but this heater just won't cut out if you put power to it and it's that's job to cut it out now um, so let's turn it on see what happens there we go so that's on so we've got power oh, and that should have just turned it on oh, and it turns straight back on Ah, low. So we're reading low at the minute. That's because there's not enough water flow. That's because I've actually bypassed this. So if I turn that up, that should. So 
So we come off of low, lovely, and then shortly that should turn on when it, it sort of resets itself and uh, comes on. So the float switch connects into here. Uh, right here, these two pins here, that's your float switch. These two are your thermostat, your, not your thermostat, your, what do you call it, the temperature probe thing, that's the word. These two are your heater, and that's your main. There's actually an alarm output on it, but I'm not actually quite sure what it does. I've tried putting uh, voltage across it to see what voltage comes out, and I didn't really get out, so I don't know under what circumstances it would actually start alarming. Uh, but there we go, so. Let's wait for it to turn the heater back on. Oh, there we go. Turn the heater back on. So it's all running fine. So that's pretty good. So the, if I turn this off here, which bypasses the water, so there'll be no water going to the heater anymore. So if I turn this off, like so, that should turn off pretty much straight away. There we go. There we go. So there's a little bit of delay, whereas before it would have turned off straight away. Uh, this turns it off after about a second, and now it says low, as you can see. Um, so let's get the water back flowing through the pond. There we go, 19.1 degrees. And then the heater will come on back on shortly. So let's get this all neatened up a bit so it looks a little bit better. Put that back where it should be. Get all this back together and um, make it a bit neater. So what I did, as you can see, there's two black cables coming out of here. And then here's a little junction here. There's no, this is no voltage in this. It's only, I think it's about nine volt, just a uh, little on and off thing. And then it goes into this four core uh, cable, which does the uh, power for the heater uh, to and from as well. So um, that means I can just have all white cables going into it instead of white and black. So I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a white cable in this smaller size. Sure. What I need to do now is put it all back together and I'll show you it all neatly together. So there we go, all back together nice and neatly. So that's where the uh, controller is going to go. Obviously there's a little bit of excess cable that comes down because I needed the uh, room. But it's not a problem, you can't really see it for it drum filter in way. And uh, there's your switch as before. And then the heater, same as before but there's two cables coming out of the top instead of just the one. And obviously the little thing that I used to have is gone. Uh, but unfortunately left a couple of rolls in it all, so I'm going to put a picture there, probably. <laughs> uh, so the uh, there's two lights on that now. Previously the blue one used to show that the flow was correct. Now it doesn't. It, they both do the exact same thing. Both of the blue and the red light just show that the heater actually is on. Um, so what I need to do now is flick it on like so. It should come on and say low, like that. And then if I turn the flow rate up, like so. So now there's flow going through there. It now tells you it's 19.1 degrees. And then in a bit, when uh, it's running, well, when it's had a chance to want to put the heater on, it shall put the heater on. So let's just wait for it to put the heater on. So there we go, that's it, the heater is now on. And as we can see this thing's actually flashing to say that the heater's actually on. So what I'm gonna do now is change it. So that's 20 degrees, that's what it's set to. I don't know what the maximum on this thing is. Uh, oh cracky five. Five's the minimum, interesting. Good to know. So if I set it to 18, and that's it in 19. Like so. I think it should turn off. And it has turned the heater off. Perfect. So let's set it back to 20. So I want it 20. Don't know why? 20 is just a nice round figure. And then it should be nice and accurately kept at 20. So pretty much I've only done this really because. I wanted a really accurate display of the actual temperature of the pond. Um, but it has its advantages. So I actually have a theory that being very accurate like that might cause it to be a little bit more energy efficient. 
I say that because previously with this heater it seemed to fluctuate a little bit so it seemed to be fairly accurate in when it would turn on and off but you set it to 20 degrees and then a couple of days later it would be set 19 you know staying around the 19 and then a couple of days after that it would be staying around the 21 mark so it keep slightly warming and cooling albeit on a couple of days maybe even a weekly sort of cycle but it would never really bang on 20 all the time as you can see when I first did started this video it read something like 18 degrees and it weren't heating I've no idea why but it seemed to just do these little fluctuations in temperature that it wanted to be at hopefully now it will keep it at 20 degrees I'm not quite sure the accuracy of that thing but I think it does come on within a few points of a degree so it should keep it pretty bang on 20 degrees and obviously I'll be able to see exactly what it is um, all the time so I'm quite pleased with that uh, the great little heaters these very simple uh, obviously it would have been a lot easier to have a digital thermostat heater but at the same time more expensive so your yeah, electro heaters I think they start at like 300 quid for a um, a one kilowatt or maybe two I'm not sure what the minimum is in them but um, I know they're quite dear whereas this one's not cost me anywhere near 300 quid so you know I've got a digital controller controlling a nice clean line heater so they actually do do digital controllers similar to this one that control a heater that you drop into your filter or something like that I didn't want that because the filters water level can fluctuate quite a bit you know sometimes I'll accidentally forget to put it on automatic because I'm an idiot and the filter will just drop all its water out which is inconvenient but if you had a heater that then came on to heat the water up that weren't there you know I don't want that kind of hassle so I've stuck with the inline heater where I can't have that sort of trouble the only trouble I do have with the inline heater is it does get slightly mucky uh, due to the uh, obviously the, a lot of fish like this uh, smaller fish in the tank produce this weird sticky waste that even gets past the drum filter and it sort of lines your um, pipes so every six months I take that heater off and just go down it with jet wash and it runs it clean but yeah so I'm really pleased with this system let's see how it runs for the next couple of days if you like this video then please like it if you want to see more videos like this and fishing related videos then please feel free to subscribe if you have any questions or comments then please put them down below and I shall see you in the next video thank you for watching